After the brutal and gruesome killing of Sidhu Musewala recently, talks have now shifted to the culture of guns and how guns could be accessed and how even automatic and semi-automatic guns thrive unhindered. Apart from this, every now and then we hear about the mass shooting that happens in the United States of America or other nations and almost after every few months, conversation then starts to begin about the easy access of guns that people have. But there are differences between laws in India and other nations that govern the provision of access of guns and licenses in India. Getting gun legally is completely another matter and nobody can curb it. Today, we will take a look at laws and rules that govern the possession of guns for civilians in India. We will talk about the various aspects there are in the statute books about it. Now, unlike the United States of America, the right to carry firearms is not a constitutional right here in India. It is a special provision that is heavily regulated. You cannot get firearms by citing any sort of right because it is not a constitutional right and not even your legal right. There are actually two main laws in India that details the eligibility, permission and other accessibility access related to the civilians for the possession of guns or firearms. These are Indian Arms Act of 1959 and the Arms Rule of 1962. Now, the Indian Arms Act of 1959 has its origin in the Arms Act of 1878, which was passed during the British era. After independence, the 1878 Act paved way for the Arms Act of 1959. Now, under this Act, no person can acquire, possess or carry any firearms or ammunition until and unless he holds a valid license. Now, getting a gun license is a very long drawn out process that usually takes at least about an year and the license is only valid for three years from the date of its approval. Moreover, nobody in India can carry more than two firearms at any given time except somebody who is a dealer in firearms or a member of the Rifle Association recognized by the Central Government of India. But there are certain exemptions granted to sportsperson regarding the number of the firearms they can carry for their practice for events. Now, the Arms Act of 1959 has classified firearms in two groups. The first is the PB or that is the prohibited board and the other one is the NPB which is the non-prohibited board. And the board over here basically means the thickness or the diameter of the bullet. Prohibited board weapons are more lethal than the NPBs and are actually issued under specific conditions after fulfillment of certain criteria. Now, PB weapons include 9mm pistols, handguns of caliber of 0.38, 0.455 and 0.303 caliber rifles. Now, the category of PB weapons further include semi-automatic and fully automatic guns. Actually, an amendment was made in 2008 in the criteria of how these prohibited board firearms are issued after the Mumbai attack. Now, actually, prior to the 2008 Mumbai attacks, only defense personnel were issued the PB category weapons. But after the attack, few changes were actually made in the provision and to issue the PB weapons to those civilians who face serious and imminent threat to their lives or are residing in terrorist-prone areas or even government officials who have made themselves target in front of the terrorists by nature of their job or MLAs or even MPs of the citizens associated with anti-terror programs. Now, due to the threat level, even the family members can also keep PB weapons. Only the central government has the authority to issue prohibited war weapons. The second classification is that of NPBs, that is, the non-prohibited weapons. NPB weapons include the rest of the firearms. 
any civilian can apply to obtain NPBs. Now in India, guns for civilians are issued for just three purposes. The first one is when an application is made citing the reason of self-defense. Next is for sports use and the third one is for crop protection. In the cases of self-defense, an individual must prove impending threat to his or her life. The process of getting firearm license is long and quite exhausting. An intensive check is done by the authorities. Now, once the license is approved, the story doesn't end and the applicant has to participate in the compulsory arms handling course where he or she are taught about the safe handling of the weapon. Now, the minimum age to actually get an arms license in India is 21 years and it is mandatory to carry the weapon issued in the holster or in a rucksack. Now, the government has the right to confiscate any such weapon at any time. Now, an arm issued under this license can only be carried in the same district for which the permission has been granted by the authorities of that district, that is the district magistrate. Now, different application needs to be filled out if one needs to carry out their arm into a different district or a state. There are also few grounds and reasons on the basis of which your arm license cannot be issued. A few grounds include anyone below the age of 18, anyone of unsound mind and anyone who is out on bail and is expected to display a good behaviour. It is also not issued to people who have been convicted of a crime. Now, any reason for the refusal to grant a license has to be mentioned in writing by the authorities. Furthermore, individuals are also not allowed to alter, remove or even forge names, numbers or other identification marks on firearms. So, as you saw in this video, these were few of the laws that you have to go through if you want to get a license for firearms in India. We hope that you enjoyed this video and if you like this kind of a content, please do subscribe to One India News YouTube channel, like this video, share with your friends and family and also don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notification for other videos. Thanks for watching.